the importance or the meaning of both is that they celebrate the excellence that has been demonstrated by African innovators, technologists, and researchers across the continent, and how specifically these people have been using machine learning and AI to, to impact and to benefit and to advance uh, our, our body of, um, of work as Africans, and how this work can be, um, is, is working to build us together, to build the African uh, community and, and as in the spirit of the Ndaba this year. And so I'll get to explaining a little bit more about the awards, uh, but before I do, I thought I'd, um, let me just, uh, before I do, I thought I'd just give a little bit of background as to why we established them. So the Deep Learning Daba, which is this week, uh, is all about strengthening African machine learning and artificial intelligence, Masakane, building together. And so part of this, part of this goal of strengthening mach African machine learning is, uh, it, it takes, takes three, three sort of forms. The first is the Ndaba itself, which is this week, being together here, learning, building AI communities. The second aspect is the Ndaba X series, which you may have been aware of. So these are sort of independent Ndaba, or like mini Ndabas that have been run across the continent over the last uh, couple of months. And uh, the intention of, of, of the Ndaba X series is to really build um, AI leadership uh, in Africa. And then the third prong is this awards program and the, the, the focus of this session. And it is to create the space to recognize um, and, and really celebrate new stories of African AI innovation. And so it is this sort of interacting and reinforcing trinity of factors that instantiate our mission as the Deep Learning Indaba in strengthening African AI and machine learning. And so, the Kambule Dissertation Award is given to a doctoral candidate at an African institution who has demonstrated excellence in the research and writing of their PhD thesis in any area of computational and statistical sciences. And the M Matai Impact Award is given to an African innovator who has demonstrated excellence in the way that they've used machine learning and artificial intelligence to do something impactful, something that's benefiting uh, Africa and her communities. And Myself, as well as many in the audience, have been part of the process of receiving these nominations and, and reviewing them and finally selecting the winners. And we were just inspired, really, by the set that we received. And so for each award, we have uh, a winner, as well as two honorable mentions. And so uh, I'm really excited today to be the one on the stage sharing this information with you. Okay, so... Just to give you a bit of uh, a background, so as I said, the Kambule Dissertation Award is given to a doctoral candidate um, who has demonstrated research excellence. And the award itself is named after doc Dr. Tamsankwe Kambule, uh, and he was one of South Africa's greatest mathematicians and teachers. Uh, and he is remembered for his life's contributions to education, specifically black education under the uh, Bantu Education Act, which was the segregated education system in apartheid South Africa. Through his teaching, uh, 20 years of which he was the principal of the Orlando High School in Soweto, he, he went on to shape and, and influence the minds of, of, of many, including the Nobel Peace Prize winner Archbishop Desmond Tutu, as well as many others. And alongside his passion for teaching, he was also a gifted mathematician. He was awarded honorary doctorate degrees from University of Pretoria, Fort Hare, and Witz, and he was the University of Witwatersrand's first black professor in mathematics. In 2002, former president, South African President Thabo Mbeki awarded him the order, the order of the Baobab and Gold for his exceptional contribution to mathematics, to education, human development, and community service. And so it's really fitting that for his contributions uh, in the field of mathematics and his dedication to teaching and, and furthering the minds of his students, that this award is, is named after him. And uh, we are also very grateful to our sponsors for this, for this award. Uh, the award is made possible by the Africa Oxford Initiative. So this is an initiative based at the University of Oxford, and its aim is to encourage collaborations between African institutions and the University of Oxford. And so not only have they sponsored the prize money for this award, but they've also invited the winner of the award to uh, University of Oxford to present some of the research. So... As I said, we had two honorable mentions for this award, and we were very excited. So the first honorable mention is to Dr. Maria Schultz of the University of KwaZulu-Natal, 
for her thesis in Quantum Machine Learning for Supervised Pattern Recognition, How Quantum Computers Learn from Data. And she's here today, so we're going to welcome her, uh, congratulate her. And the second honorable mention for the Kambule Award is to Dr. Theodore Lutz for his thesis in Contemplating Statistics, Estimation and Regression According to Arc Lengths. And he unfortunately isn't able to be here, but let's give him a round of applause and congratulations. <laughs> and it gives me now great pleasure to announce the winner of this award. Um, and it is the worthy recipient, Dr. Justine Nasseja of the University of KwaZulu-Natal, for her thesis in Random Survival Forests, an Alternative Method in Analyzing Time-to-Event Data. And she looked at two very pertinent applications uh, with regards to Africa, one being under five child mortality in Uganda and extremely drug-resistant tuberculosis. So unfortunately, Justine is not able to be here today because, uh, well, it's actually a fortunate reason because she gave birth to twins last week. And um, <laughs> and so on her behalf, uh, I believe a personal friend and future colleague, Linda Kumala, will be accepting the award for her. Good morning. Um, Dr. Justine would have loved to be here, but as you heard, she had another momentous event in her life around about the same time as the Indava. I'm um, absolutely honored and thrilled to receive this award on her behalf. Um, the reason why she asked me to do this was because I sent her the link for the call for nominations and I encouraged her to apply. So in the future, if you don't hesitate to nominate any of your colleagues and friends for awards, and maybe you'll also be receiving their award for them. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Uh, and even though Justine couldn't be here today, uh, she, she sent us a short video of some things that she wanted to share about her, her PhD and, uh, and her journey. And so we have this available, so we'll see if this hopefully works. Good day, everyone. I am Justine Nasege, and I'm grateful for the organizers of the 2018 Deep Learning Dava meeting for according me this opportunity of sharing my academic work with you. I acknowledge my supervisors Prof. Henry Mwambi from the University of KwaZulu-Natal and Dr. Maya Wazowski from the University of Cape Town for their guidance during this PhD research work. I'm so grateful for the recognition this research work has received to the extent of receiving the first Kambuli Dissertation Award. I'm honored to share in the legacy of a man like Dr. Kambuli. I apologize for not being present at this wonderful meeting given my condition. I hope that I'll be able to attend the next meeting given this is a temporary condition. My PhD research work involves the investigation of properties of random survival forests and their capability in analyzing time to event all survival data. And this was initiated from my master's research work in 2014, where I had analyzed the data set from a demographic health survey to understand factors affecting and five mortality in Uganda. The mortality figures were high at the time in Uganda and Sub-Saharan Africa in general, and most governments 
We are rushing to know how well they were doing in meeting the Millennium Development Goal. We were, however, unable to include some of the features, or one would say that statistically covariates in analyzing our in our analyzing our data because of the models that we used at the time. The most the, the models had some assumptions that would naturally exclude features that did not satisfy such assumptions. We therefore decided to use survival trees and forests, which are simple machine learning techniques that were new at the time and hypothesized to be superior in analyzing time to event data. And they are considered less restrictive or no assumption were required on the nature of the data in question. The trees group survival data into high or low survival rates based on the features or covariates. With such groupings, one or a researcher can easily state the features responsible for high or low mortality and also predict new mortality rates or survival probabilities for individuals or children, in this case, from other study cohorts. With this, or this machine learning technique, we were able to include all features in our analysis and also noticed an increase in precision in our results compared to our pre previous analysis of the same data set using the traditional models or traditional statistical models. We also noticed that the machine learning algorithm for the survival forest we have used chose covariates or features with much information or one would say with many levels and it would exclude most of the time features that had fewer levels, that would say, uh, in, in, a, in a computer science sense, less entropy. We were therefore puzzled on how best can we eliminate this, this inconvenience in our analysis, and that's when we uh, found a theoretical paper that I hypothesized on another machine learning algorithm that would do a statistical test on how a future affects the outcome variable before the splitting of the data set is done. And the algorithm is known as the conditional inference forest algorithm. And what it does is it tests how strongly a future or covariance related to the outcome variable in question before grouping individuals into high or low survival probabilities. And we had to do a simulation study because there was no physical evidence on this hypothesis. And we analyzed, we did a, we did a simulation study with um, data sets that had futures with uh, many levels and those with fewer levels. Literally, we simulated a heterogeneous cohort study. And in our analysis, we were able to clearly state the superiority of this algorithm in analyzing survival data from such cohorts. We applied the algorithm on two real data sets. Data sets, sorry. One was the one from the previous study on understanding factors affecting and the child mortality in Uganda. And the, the next data, the second data set was from a 10-year cohort study that was done in South Africa to understand the long-term or identify factors affecting long-term treatment outcomes in patients with extremely drug-resistant T TB, and our results gave better predictive outcome compared to the previous analysis on the mortality data from Uganda, as we had earlier stated, because we were able to include all the features in our data sets. 
We were also able to identify factors responsible for affecting long-term treatment outcomes uh, for patients with uh, extremely drug-resistant TB, like survival, net spectrum, and rever reversion, conversion. And we were able to also extract drug interactions that could help in dealing with this disease, which is a huge challenge in South Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa in general in our time. However, it is unfortunate to say that none of these drug interactions were significant in fighting the disease. We therefore advise the people involved in the fight against this disease to look for alternative drugs and solutions. I conclude by saying that machine learning techniques, if well studied and understood, are the future to solving our public health burden in Africa. And current research should focus on how best to give an individual prediction based on their unique characteristics rather than giving a prediction on disease or not disease because you are grouped with individuals having similar but not same characteristics. Thank you for your time. And once again, I'm so grateful for the award and I'm looking forward to future research and collaborations that will result from receiving such a wonderful uh, opportunity and award. Thank you very much. And it's also a happy coincidence, actually, that Justine is just, uh, has just accepted an associate professorship up at the University of Witwatersrand, and she will actually be based in a building that is named after Dr. Kambule. So um, that, that was a happy coincidence. Okay, so the next award, um, the next award is the Matai Impact Award, and this is given to an African innovator, as I said before, an African innovator, technologist, researcher, who has used machine learning and artificial intelligence in an impactful way, in a way that is benefiting Africa and her communities. And the award is named after Professor Wangari Muta Matai. Professor Matai is Africa's first a female Nobel laureate and is internationally recognized for her contributions to democracy, peace, and sustainable development in Kenya and across the Greater African Collective. She was born in rural Kenya and she went on to become the first woman in East and Central Africa to earn a doctorate degree and to be appointed to associate professor. She was also very vocal, um, a very vocal environmental and political activist and was central to Kenya's first multi-party elections in 1992, during which she strove for free and fair elections, and that eventually led her to serve on the Kenyan government. Her, her deep connection with the environment led her to found a pan-African movement, or pan-African pan environmental organization called the Green Belt Movement, uh, whose goal was to reduce poverty and provo promote environmental conservation through community-based tree planting. And she was also a fierce advocate for women, uh, she served on the National Council of Women of Kenya for 11 years uh, and, and through, her work, uh, of, uh, well, through her work with the GBM wanted to uplift the lives of the women around her. And in 2004, for her contributions, for her work, she was recognized uh, with the Nobel Peace Prize. And even today, she continues her inspirational work. She's founded the Wangari Institute for Peace and Environmental Studies uh, in partnership with the University of Nairobi. And she has also, also been appointed the United Nations Messenger of Peace on Environmental and Climate Change. And so for, for all her work, for all her contributions, this award could, could not be more suitably named. Um, Professor Matai recognized the capacity of, of the individual to be a positive force for change. So by recognizing that the ideas and initiatives that we have, uh, no, no matter how small, um, can, really, can really make a difference. And so the two honorable mentions for this award, the first goes to Alfred Ongere of AI Kenya. He is uh, one of the founders of AI Kenya, which is an online community of AI learners 
It has now over 300 active members across Kenya, and Alfred is involved in, in all parts of, of this uh, uh, foundation, so in teaching, in coordinating, in sharing resources, motivating other students to learn. And uh, so, yes, congratulations to him. And our second honorable mention goes to Franz Krenier of Data Profit. So Data Profit is a South African-based company um, who's aiming to uh, move towards zero defect manufacturing using AI. And they've already seen many success ca cases across industries, uh, including the automotive, steel, and engine shipping sectors. So congratulations to him as well. And now it gives me great pleasure to announce the winner of the 2018 um, Matai Impact Award. And we have our winner here with us at the Endeavor, so this is also very exciting. Uh, and that is Yasini Musa Ayami of uh, tech startup Sogolo Tech. So Yasini. Yasini is the founder of Tsogolotek, and Tsogolotek is uh, working toward ubiquitous financial inclusion of rural women in Zambia, and, and by doing so, enhancing not only the economic um, contributions or foundations of the Zambian, Zambian economy, but also the African economy. So Yasini is uh, able to share a little bit of his work with us, so let's just get his presentation <coughs> up. Uh, morning everyone. Uh, before I, uh, I begin with my, uh, my presentation, I just want to share a few words uh, to the organizers uh, of the Indava and ev uh, all the participants of the Indava and the people that uh, partook in the Mata Impact Award. On behalf of Togolotech, I would like to thank Deep Learning Indava organizing team and everyone that took part in the Matai Impact Award. The birth of the Silicon Valley and the emergence of the Meg Zagerbeck and Steve Jobs of this world did not happened from without, but rather it was as a result of creation and sustaining of a conducive, encouraging environment that rewards and not punishes innovation and creativity. Through the Matai Impact Award, innovators are encouraged and rewarded to create solutions that contribute toward solving some of our uh, daily social economic problems. Further, through the ongoing endeavor, a platform has been provided to us innovators to connect and interact with people from industry as well as researchers who provide us with valuable advice on how we can further advance our innovations. We therefore would like to urge uh, Deep Learning Indava to continue engaging innovators and researchers. In particular, we wish to urge the Deep uh, Learning Indava to sustain and double its standards in the uh, deep learning in Dava Axis, which I was privileged to lead its co-hosting in my country, that's Lusaka, Zambia, last year, uh, this year in March. We hope this is not the end of the relationship that we have just built, but rather the beginning of greater things to come. Africa has come, Africa has many social economic problems which are well documented. These problems need resolving. These problems need, uh, need solutions. These problems need, uh, this, this, these problems need solutions, uh, solutions that are Afrocentric and leveraging on modern technology. This is, uh, this is what the partnership, this is, uh, this is what this partnership, this is, this platform is all about, encouraging and rewarding each other in tackling our social economic problems using technology. So long live uh, deep learning in Dawa, long live Africa. <laughs> So uh, I'm just going to give a, a brief presentation uh, on Sogolotech and what we're doing uh, at Sogolotech and what we aim to achieve in future. So uh, Sogolotech so is a tech startup 
that uh, aims at uh, leveraging uh, state-of-the-art technology such as AI, machine learning, to kind of uh, contribute towards solving social economic problems that uh, we are facing as a continent and we are facing as a country. So what we've identified is that um, there are researchers out there, uh, we've got NGOs, I've not seen much NGOs here, but we've got NGOs there that are kind of uh, are reaching out to people that are underserved. And so these people, when they're in those communities, they tend to uh, uncover problems that these people are facing. Then on the other hand, we've got uh, geeks who are like stationed in some corner somewhere and just busy creating cool apps. So the problem is these cool apps that they're creating uh, don't have any social or don't have any economic value or something like that. So when they're deploying to the market, you find that these solutions uh, are not profitable in a way. So we are trying to bridge the gap in trying to kind of like provide a platform where these uh, engineers are provided with a platform where they, instead of like creating cool apps which are not marketable, can instead uh, use their skills in trying to solve uh, these social economic problems. So uh, in line with uh, this year's uh, Endeavor theme, which is building together, that's what we're trying to achieve at Sogolotech, where we want uh, local developers, instead of, like going, uh, instead of them contributing to offshore projects, uh, of course, uh, using GitHub, they can instead like, contribute to local projects. So if we can come up with a local repository where we can push our uh, local projects and then let local developers kind of uh, help out in trying to solve these uh, local problems. So one of the problems that uh, we were dealing with, uh, which uh, is, the result, is the reason why I'm standing here, was the issue to do with uh, financial inclusion. Uh, I believe that every one of us is uh, aware of this, uh, tr uh, this uh, issue of financial uh, inclusion that has been making waves on the internet. I believe that everyone here has got a bank account. So when people talk about the issue of financial inclusion, you might, you might think that uh, it's not really a serious issue. But where I come, I'm coming from, it is a, a serious issue because like about 41% of uh, the adults are not uh, financially included. They're financially, they're financially excluded, majority of which are women and they're coming from rural areas. So, these people are underserved, uh, and I don't know if we've got any banks here. Uh, these banks, because they look down upon these people and have not provided these people with uh, uh, places where they can kind of uh, perform their banking uh, transactions. You find that these people do not have banking accounts. These people do not have access to loans. These people do not have to other financial uh, services that we are currently enjoying. So these people have resorted to coming up with these, what we call village banks. So with these village banks, uh, members of a community identify each other. So more like the way you've got stock bells here. So members of the community kind of like identify each other and then come up with a group of about 10 to 25 people, and then on a weekly or monthly basis, they get to contribute like uh, monies. So when they start up, when they start the groups, they kind of like come up with some sort of a constitution which uh, guides them in uh, what they do this transaction. So uh, the constitution contains things like uh, uh, savings going to be fixed or non fixed. So like if let's say somebody is somebody allowed to, are we going to have a fixed amount that we are going to be saving or anybody can just contribute whatever amount. So all that is contained in the, in the constitution. So using these savings that they do, they're able to, to kind of like borrow each other money. So let's say uh, I want to boost my business. I don't have access to a bank. So using this uh, village bank, these people are able to borrow each other money. They're able to, if let's say somebody has got a funeral, most, of, uh, most South Africans, I know, uh, there's this issue of insurance. Everything is kind of insured. 
these people do not have insurance. So if somebody passes away, like you don't have to go to some insurance uh, insurance company to go and claim uh, for them to kind of cut your bills. So these people through these communities are able to kind of support each other when they in, during the times of need. So uh, the other thing is, uh, I don't know if you guys have been following the news. We had, uh, of, of, for the, uh, is it uh, the past two months or something, one of the big markets in Lusaka, Zambia got burnt. And because the, the products there are not insured, those people were kind of resorted to a government to kind of help them in trying to recover their goods. But unfortunately, we're living in a country where the corrup uh, corruption is very high. So uh, these people were not helped in a way. So like they kind of lost their livelihoods and these people are just uh, living in their homes now. So in Africa, of course, there's been a major campaign of trying to alleviate poverty and things like that. But how do we alleviate poverty when this is the case? It's a case where we are not able to provide these people with formal financial services. So the problem that we identified was this issue. You know, as these people do these transactions, they kind of record their transactions here. So they record the savings, uh, their expenses, uh, the loans, and things like that. So whichever transactions that take uh, place during that week, they are recorded on this sheet here. So the problem that we identified was, so when they create these groups, there are two types of books. There's one which is for the group, and an individual has got a book, which we call the passbook. So uh, of course, with time, the individual passbook gets uh, filled up with maybe transactions and things like that. So you, get, you have to maybe replace it. So you find that when you replace the book, uh, these, we're dealing with people that have, uh, are, uh, are very poor in a way. So you find that maybe the book is eaten up by rodents or rats. You find that maybe when the house, uh, when, when there's rainfall, a lot of rainfall, then you find that maybe the house gets, uh, you know, water gets inside the house and maybe everything is washed away. Or you find that a situation where the person that maybe records for them transactions is absent. Uh, these people are not able to record transactions. And the other thing is, um, since these people are not literate, you find that they're not able to track whatever transactions are being recorded on this sheet here. So we decided to come up with uh, the Tukuka app. So this Tukuka app uh, aims at doing the following. One is to kind of automate these transactions where we're able to, uh, to, to record the loans, savings, fines, and expenses. So track financial records. So uh, what happens is, as they borrow each other money, you pay back the money with uh, some sort of interest. Then, uh, depending on your constitution, they get to share the money at the end of the year, or they just continue saving the money. So depending on how much that you save, uh, you kind of have like shares. You kind of have like shares. So the issue of dividing, because we're dealing with people that have, don't have any financial knowledge, the issue of, you know, like how much this person is supposed to get is kind of automated by the app and also uh, how much the groups ha have saved so far, how much money has been loaned out, all these things is uh, automatically done by the app. So then uh, these groups are monitored by NGOs because these NGOs are here to kind of uh, provide support to these groups. So it acts like a diagnostic tool which will help these NGOs to kind of figure out where these groups are lacking and obviously give them support in that area. Then it also provides uh, useful insights to banks and the government. So let's say the bank wants to set up a branch somewhere. So using this data that's generated from this app, we're able to kind of give the banks where to kind of station their branch. And obviously the government does, this, this money that they save, it is uh, saved in some, in some box and then it is locked. So this, is, this money goes untracked by the government. So if we digitize this process, in a way, we'll be kind of giving the government insights on how much these people are saving, how much money these people have, and subsequently, the government will be able to plan for these people. This uh, project, the, the, organizations that, the organization that was helping us pilot this project is dealing with 2,000 groups. Each group has got an average of between 
uh, 10 to 25 members. So you're talking about, uh, worst case scenario, you're talking about 20,000 uh, women. So if this app is successful, we'll reach out to 22,000 plus women who will be included in the formal financial sector. Then also, because these people, do, uh, these women do not have collateral, so they cannot go to banks to go and uh, get loans and things like that. So we are aiming that based on uh, using the data that's generated from these transactions and of course leveraging on AI, machine learning, deep learning, we're able to kind of build a credit profile which will subsequently enable them like go, get to, go to the bank and then uh, get a loan or some sort of insurance. Because we're dealing with people who have got no collateral. Uh, when, when I reached out to certain people, I mean, I was told that in one group, the richest person, the richest person was only uh, owning a hen. Do you guys, are you, uh, because I know that uh, here it's difficult to find a chicken, but you know that hen, so you find that the, <laughs> so the richest person in the group uh, only owned a hen, a hen which you can maybe get for some, maybe $10 or something like that. So this, this is the situation, you know, this is the, uh, the problem that we're currently facing. So using this app also, there are possible linkages to the formal financial sector. And of, of course, you know, uh, we've got a lot of research around, uh, researchers around here and people who are hungry for research. So we're also uh, seeking to kind of like uh, provide a data set which our researchers can kind of make use of and then obviously uh, do some more research and see how these people can be financially included. So other projects that we intend working on and we're currently working on, you guys might have heard that we had a cholera outbreak uh, early this year. In Lusaka, about 6,000 cases were recorded and it claimed 100 lives. So living in, a, in an era where data is con uh, considered to be the digital currency, I mean, I feel insulted, <laughs> insulted you know, to kind of like record such uh, uh, stats. So we tend to come up with ways in which machine learning can be used, you know, using weather data and past uh, cases of cholera can be used to kind of uh, predict the likelihood of a cholera outbreak. And then, of course, uh, subsequently, uh, uh, this thing, uh, saving the lives of people. Then, of course, we've got this severe uh, agriculture uh, technology. Uh, in Lusaka now, there's uh, the mushrooming of uh, poultry, so we want to kind of provide a solution that kind of like enables uh, farmers to manage their poultry uh, what's it, uh, remotely or through their app, uh, their phones. So the, the idea behind this, this is because right now if I go to people to tell them, okay, we've got this idea, fund us, you know, there'll be this, that, that, that. So the idea that we're coming up with this kind of solutions is to kind of like uh, help us support these other projects. So this, this, is, this is kind of like a business-oriented program. And then this cholera issue is a social solution. Because if we go to the government, uh, help us funding, they won't do that. So we're hoping that using these business solutions will be able to kind of offset the expenses that we've been incurred whilst developing these social solutions. Then, of course, we've got uh, the annual deep learning in Dawa, which was a success. We had the deep learning in Dawa, which we had about 60 participants. More wanted to come, but due to the li limited resources that we had, it's unfortunate. I, 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 was um, I was starting at the Debian University of Technology, and everything was free. I, was, I had access to labs, computers, and things like that. So when I went to Zambia to kind of organize, I, th I was assuming that uh, it was the same thing but it was unfortunate that I had to pay for everything when organizing. So that in a way kind of like uh, made us incur a lot of expenses. So we were not able to accommodate a number of people. So uh, people have been you know, reaching out to us and telling us, no, this is a good initiative. We want it to be, ye uh, to be happening on uh, a yearly basis. And I was happy to hear uh, yesterday when uh, uh, it was announced that next year also there will be an Indava X. So we're hoping to collaborate with the deep learning in Dava X again uh, in the uh, in future this uh, deep learning in Davas. Then we've got this school outreach program. So initially, when we started Sogolo Tech, that was like last year or the year before. 
we, our main goal was kind of to reach out to high school pupils to spark that interest of programming in them so that these, through, through them like uh, embracing technology at an early age, they can kind of also kind of contribute towards some, some of these social economic problems. And uh, the, uh, the other mandate of Sogolo Tech is to kind of like uh, build capacity in the field of machine learning. So we've, we've, uh, we, ha we usually have these uh, data science uh, tutorials, which are held on a monthly basis. These tutorials like uh, introduce these people to uh, people who don't have uh, the expertise in machine learning to these uh, cutting edge technologies and obviously we're hoping that once uh, they embrace these, uh, cutting uh, these te uh, cutting edge technologies, then they'll be able to recontribute uh, towards solving some social economic problems. So all this has been, uh, all what we've been doing has been through uh, the generous support from these guys here, that's uh, the Deep Learning Indava, NVIDIA, the Zambia National Data Center, Family Development Initiative, and the Python Software Foundation. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes? So Golo is uh, an African word, a Southern African word, which means forward. So if I was to name artificial intelligence, if I was to give it a local name or give it to Golo, means kind of future. Yes, but also we're also trying to kind of explore the root of uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies. So it's something that it's ongoing and we're still doing some research on it. Because the reason why these people, of course there's this issue of Airtel money, mobile monies uh, penetrating in Africa. In East Africa you've got the M-Pesa, in uh, Zambia, Malawi you've got the Airtel money, MTN monies. So what's actually happening is um, people are making, are doing all these banking transactions using the mobile, uh, uh, mobile phones. So somebody had tried out uh, using, uh, uh, making these people do their savings through these mobile, uh, these, uh, mobile uh, services. But that was not successful because uh, of the rates. Because when you have to withdraw money, then you have to, what's this, pay. So that was not feasible in a way. So we're trying to explore ways in which these guys, the little that they're making won't be also used to uh, fuel other bills, expenses like uh, monthly charges, withdrawing expenses, or things like that. So we s we're still exploring other avenues. Among them is blockchain. Okay, uh, I was trying to avoid the issue of money because, uh, you know. <laughs> okay, so the issue that we're currently facing is, okay, we did a prototype with a mobile app and uh, because most of these people are people that uh, uh, the savings are very less. So we, that was not kind of feasible in a way. So we, we're trying to kind of explore the issue uh, uh, the usage of uh, USSD. So if they can kind of use SSD to do the transactions, that's what we are trying to do. So uh, as Sogoro Tech, there's no, most of the people that have been helping me uh, uh, work on this project are people that are not full-time. 
they've got, they're employed full time and they've got just using their spare time, they were able to kind of help, our, help me out. It was, uh, we don't have the capacity at the moment to kind of hire people to work on our solutions. So if funds are there, I think it would somehow uh, access, accelerate our research in this area. And because right now our research has been slow because of uh, lack of expertise. So if we had funds, then we can hire people. And then obviously uh, we can accelerate research in this uh, thing. Okay. No, we're open uh, for collaboration. Yes. Okay. Are there any questions? Can I give Yasinia another round of applause? That concludes the award session for today, and um, yeah, what, what, what an inspiring program. Um, I'm sure I'm sure we're all in agreement there, and so yeah, a, a generous a thanks to our generous sponsors, um, the people who have made this possible, and really this is just this is just the start. Uh, this is the first year we're running this. We will do so again in, in next year, next in Daba, and, and going forwards. And we're looking to, to grow the program, to get more nominations, to make those nominations come from, uh, from, from further reaching parts across the continent. And so there are many ways in which each of you can participate, whether it's in nominating someone, in applying yourself, um, in helping us sort of review the applications and nominations that come in. And so, yeah, this is really just the start of it. And uh, for more information, just uh, follow our uh, follow the website, follow our announcements with the awards program, and um, I'm, I'm very excited. So thank you all for, for attending, and again, congratulations to all our winners.